What's up Speedy's Garage gang and welcome back to the Speedy's Garage YouTube channel. This week we're still working on rest the restoration project for Project Sport Runner. If you've been following along you know we got the ball joints we got the suspension adjusted we did a timing belt water pump radiator upper and lower radiator hoses i'll leave a link to the top because we're pretty far into this now this is probably the fourth or fifth episode for this restoration and it's still got quite a bit to go so i'll leave a link to the top to the playlist today i'm going to be working on the automatic transmission fluid service so that's what we got in store i'm going to show you how i'm going to do it and there's actually more than one way, one more, more than one correct way, I'll even say, to get this job done. Uh, the first time I did this, I had access to one of those fluid exchange machines. And basically what you do is you fill your new fluid into a, con it's like a, a big unit. I'll leave a picture of it here, but one side has new fluid and you figure out the capacity of the vehicle you're working on. You put your new fluid in the, the new fluid side you hook it up to the coolant lines on the transmission, you fire up the car and you just let the car idle and it will cycle the old fluid out and the new fluid in and you have kind of like a monitor and when it gets to the um, capacity that you put in for the new fluid, it stops and you've now performed the service. So that's one option. Those machines are expensive and most people don't have them in their home garages or shops. So that's something you usually have to go somewhere to do. It's been about 15 years since I did that service and I used Mobile One Synthetic ATF, and it allowed me to go to 100,000 miles, and that's right at 100,000 now, 15 years, like I said. So it's time for me to do it again. The second option that some people do is they just take the drain bolt out of the transmission drain pan, which will drain around three quarts. We'll find out today, because I'm gonna start with that, but around three quarts, and then they just top up through the fill the, the dipstick for the transmission, the fill hole, they just top it back up with those three quarts and they might do that once a year. And the thought process there is over three to four years, you've basically recycled all to new fluid because drain three, you put three in year one. I think it holds around 11, I think the field service manual says 11 quarts, give or take. So over three or four years, you've completely exchanged the fluid out. And that's fine too, if you like to tinker on your truck, it's only gonna cost you one of those little crush washers for the, uh, the drain pan bolt. The final method and the way I'm gonna do it, because I just wanna do it once and know I'm good to go for a while, is you can disconnect the return line from the radiator and hook up a new piece of hose into a bucket. You probably need one that's graduated so that you can measure. And then you start the vehicle and it's almost the same as the shop tool or the big shop machine. It's almost the exact same thing. As the transmission pumps fluid out, you add fluid in to the dipstick fill hole. So that's how I'm gonna do it. The tricky part will be if you're by yourself, you might have to start the vehicle, let it drain a quart, put a new quart in, start the vehicle, let it drain a quart, put a new quart in. It might take a minute, because like I said, it's like 11 or 12 quarts you're gonna have to go through. And I'm just gonna do it until the fluid looks nice and clear and pink. Um, you know, reddish, clear pink. That's what I'm gonna go for. I might enlist Mrs. Speedy to come out here and actually just sit in the vehicle and let it run. I can save a bunch of time not having running back and forth. And if you have a buddy, same thing having to start the truck, turn it off, start the truck, turn it off. And I'm hoping I can just have the container out here and just watch it fill up. And as soon as it gets right to a quart, I'll just pour a new quart in, goes up to a quart, I'll pour a new quart in. And I'm hoping I can do it that way and cut the time down a lot. So I'll show you the supplies I needed to get this done. I always keep a little penetrating oil around just in case the uh, coolant hose might give me some trouble. I replaced the radiator not too long ago, so I'm hoping that was soon enough that it hasn't stuck to the barb. I've got a little pick just in case, and you can put a little WD-40 around that barb if it gives you trouble and some um, uh, pliers to get the spring clamp off. It'll be, it'll be one like this. You just squeeze it and slide it back. That'll let me get the hose off. Uh, I'm gonna use my battery-powered ratchet with a 12 millimeter to get the skid plate off. I've got some, just from a previous project, some, this is 3 8 ID clear vinyl tubing. This is what I'm gonna use for the drain line. I'm gonna connect this to the radiator outlet port and run this into this graduated bucket. And then my idea is like I said, I'll just watch it fill up. When it gets to court marks, I'll just pour a new one in. When it hits here, I'll pour a new one in, et cetera, et cetera. I found this on sale. It holds eight quarts, so I'm gonna have to dump it into my catch pan uh, a couple of times probably, but this was on sale for $12. I'll leave a link in the description. You might get lucky and it's still on sale. Whoops, you're gonna need a great big funnel. And I found this one, I'll leave a link to it too, and it actually does fit in the 
dipstick fill hole. I confirmed that, so good to go there. And finally, you're gonna need quite a bit of fluid. The capacity says 10.8 quarts, but you're probably gonna need a little bit more than that to get it 100% flushed out just because you're sort of mixing some new and old in the process. I went with this Mobile One synthetic ATF because it's what I used before. I had intentionally or in originally intended to use the Valvoline Max Life. That tends to be what a lot of people like these days. It's been 15 years since I did this, so things do change. But I used this before and it's worked great. And when I went in to buy fluid, this was actually on clearance. And so depending on the region that you're in, um, I found it at one of the big box automotive stores for more than half off. So these ended up being like five bucks a quart. And I couldn't pass that up. So I bought all that they had uh, just in case they ran out or I ran out. I didn't want to have to worry about, oh no, now I can't find it, right? Or have to order it online and wait. So I actually got 16 quarts to do it. I'm planning to also do the power steering here before too long, which uses the same fluid. So I wanted to have a couple of three quarts left over for that. So hopefully between four, eight, 12, maybe 13 quarts, I can, I can flush the, the um, transmission out really good. We'll see, but I got plenty. That's what I'm gonna need to get it done. And finally, you will need this little crush washer uh, for the transmission drain pan plug and it's part number 90301-11016 and I think this thing was like a dollar 70 or something ridiculous for that little one of the prices on here ridiculous for that little washer but you got to have it now I took the truck out and drove it around to get the transmission up to operating temperature I feel like it'll drain a little bit better that way and I wanted to make sure there wasn't anything settling anywhere and I had everything mixed really well so as I'm doing this service, it'll get all of the fluid and any contaminants it may have out. Uh, right after you do that, I recommend you check the fluid level. And there's a procedure for that. You have to have the truck idling, has to be started and idling, make sure your parking brake is set. And you wanna move through the gears, um, drive, park, you know, two, one, L and back. And then you come out, and I've already done this, you pull your dipstick tube there, and you wanna make sure the fluid is between the hot, hot marks. So if it's up to operating temperature, your fluid should be right. You wanna smell it, make sure it smells okay. It shouldn't smell burnt. And you definitely want it to not be like pink milkshake looking. If you got strawberry milkshake, you got bigger problems in your uh, cooling or temperature control module in the radiator, in the bottom of the radiator, and I'll talk about that more in a minute, has probably failed and you wanna stop. You probably don't wanna do this if you've got the pink milkshake syndrome that is one of the few Achilles heels of these trucks. It'll, it'll um, Parts of the radiator fail and it allows, trans, uh, it allows coolant to get in the transmission fluid, takes out the transmission, unfortunately. So if you find that, stop, do not do this service, seek more advice, best way I can put it. But I've already checked the fluid, I know it's right, and uh, we're ready to get started. I'm gonna start by getting the skid plate off. Here is the transmission pan drain bolt, and it is a 14 millimeter. Not very tight to take that out. So I don't want to make a huge mess, but it may, may not work out anyway. Transmission fluid doesn't look too bad, actually. Not terrible, that's a good sign. I just used a magnet to fish out the little, uh, Drain bolt. All right, we're down to just a few drips. I'm gonna put the bolt back in. Do not forget your little crush washer. And the um, flat side goes towards the bolt. So you'll notice there's like a flat side and a crush, I'll call it side. The crush side faces in towards the transmission pan. And now the torque spec on that guy is 15 foot-pounds, so not very much. There we go. So look at all that fluid <laughs> that came out from just pulling the transmission drain plug. I got, hopefully you can see that, four and a half quarts. You know, the field service manual isn't infallible, but it says a drain and fill is 2.1 quarts. So they were, they were off by more than 100% because that's double. So four and a half quarts out, we gotta put four and a half quarts back in before we go to the next step. Let's pull the dipstick out. 
put the funnel in the dipstick and now we're just going to add the four and a half four and a half quarts so i've added in four and a half quarts now i'm going to dump this container so now it's freed up again and i'm going to try to do it four quarts at a time so fire up the truck maybe four to six quarts until i see it running clear so i'm going to dump this and then we're going to get ready to disconnect the transmission hose so here are the cooler or i'm going to call it temperature control because i believe that the transmission fluid it enters on this side and it returns back to the transmission on this side and in the bottom of the radiator there's like an internal small heat exchanger it looks like a radiator but it's a little brick of fins that the transmission fluid runs through and i believe in the winter time it's actually there to keep the fluid warmer if you're in like a cold climate and in the summertime it's there to regulate it and maybe cool the fluid a little bit now i've added an external transmission fluid cooler to this truck um, person that knows a whole lot more about automatic transmissions than me told me they don't like heat <clears throat> With this one being supercharged and running a little bit bigger tire, I thought it was cheap insurance. So I do have one of the, um, I think it was a Hayden. I can leave a picture of it, but it mounts up here in front of the radiator. And it usually keeps my transmission temperatures around 170 to 180, which I think is about ideal. The line you want to disconnect is this line on the driver's side. So that's the one we're gonna go for. And there will be some fluid in this line, so be, be prepared for that. And it's just a little spring clip we're gonna slide back. Let's see how much trouble it's gonna give me. All right, looks like this one's gonna slide off. Not too bad, I'll get my bucket ready. You can twist it, have better look maybe. If it's real tight, like I said, you can use a little pick and some WD-40 in there. And I'm gonna put a little 3 8 rubber cap in this hose just so it doesn't drip everywhere. I'm gonna set it up there out of the way, try to anyway. Now, I can figure out my clear vinyl tube that I'm going to run to this bucket. I'm going to put a cap on that too while I take a look at that so that doesn't drip everywhere. See how far. I'd like to have this out, this container out where I can see it while I'm pouring the fluid in. That's the idea anyway. There we go. Well, there's what I came up with. I put a little clamp on the hose to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And now we can just start the, start the truck up and let the old fluid pour into here. I can keep an eye on the graduations and just add a quart. When a quart comes out, I'll add a quart. When a quart comes out, I'll add a quart until we get four or six quarts, and then I'll probably stop and dump this and then continue until I see clear, or not clear, but clean, I guess I should say, fluid coming out right there. And it'll be easy to see because I got it right against the edge of the bucket. So due to the size of the orifice on the dipstick tube, I'm not able to pour the fluid as fast as the transmission is pumping it out. So I got to about three quarts and I felt like I was falling behind. So we've shut the truck off. I'm gonna catch up. That's why it's important to have a graduated container because that way you can keep track of exactly how much has come out, you know, exactly how much to put back in. Once that third quart fills in there, I'm gonna fire the truck back up, take it up to six. You can see the fluid now is looking very clean in the line. Hopefully you can tell it's very clean in the bucket too. So I have put 12 quarts or 12 and a half through the system and according to the field service manual the capacity is 10.8 so I've put you know a couple of quarts extra through it. I feel pretty good about how that fluid looks and mine wasn't terrible to begin with 
So I'm going to call that good. And thanks to the lovely and talented Miss Speedy for the help. Okay, I measured and I know I took out the same amount of fluid that I put back in, so we should be pretty close. The uh, truck is cooled off, and as you saw before, and I showed you a little picture, and I'll show you again, the transmission uh, level has to be checked with the engine idling, and after you go from park to low and back to park, but it also has to be at operating temperature, and, and Toyota considers that between, I think, 158 and 176 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna fire the truck up, go to the low and back to park and check it just to make sure I'm in the ballpark. But it's one of those things you're probably gonna have to check over time after you do this job and just top it up to make sure you stay in that, stay in that hot range. And I've got a transmission temperature gauge on mine. You can see it's barely registering 100, so it's definitely not to operating temp. We'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm at the very bottom of hot. And the, the transmission temperature is probably, hopefully you can see that, probably around 100 degrees. So I'm a little on the cool side. So I expect as the transmission fluid heats up, It'll, it'll move up into the, about probably the middle of this hot range here, because there's the top. So you want to be somewhere in here. So I'm going to drive it around. I'll just keep an eye on it. When it's up to operating temp, I'll double check it and top it up as necessary. So just reinstall your skid plate, and that is job done. So that's it, and it's actually pretty easy. It helped having Mrs. Speedy out here to key the truck on and off. I had hoped we could just fire it up and I could just pour automatic transmission fluid in at the same rate it came out. But because of the size of that dipstick tube, it would back up in the funnel. So I wasn't able to pour it at the same, the same flow rate. So I was able to get probably two, maybe three quarts and we'd have to shut off and I'd have to catch up and make sure everything matched. Then we fired it back up, probably did three rounds of that. And all in all, very, very easy. And I like doing this myself in my own shop because I know it's done right. And I know it's using the factory transmission pump, which isn't overloading anything within the transmission. And I know when it's clean. And you saw the transmission fluid coming out for 100,000 miles, that wasn't bad. So I'm pretty happy with the uh, Mobile One Synthetic ATF. When that's no longer available, I don't know it's clearance, like I said, so I got it super cheap. I'll probably go to that Valvoline Max Life. A lot of people like that, and it gets pretty good reviews on the oil um, analyses and all of those types of things. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage, as well as the website, www.speediesgarage.net. And stay tuned. I still got more to go on this restoration project. Hopefully I'll see you out there.